Wanna know the secret to becoming a fully booked out website designer? It's not the ability to build super trendy, eye-catching websites or having access to a crazy advanced coding knowledge. Nope. The secret to booking out your web design business is actually your own website and understanding how to properly set it up to sell your services in your sleep. I recently held an exclusive three day site fixer upper challenge where I walked business owners through the site building best practices and client psychology that they would need to get their sites landing ideal clients for them on autopilot. But after filming it, I realized that these are actually the exact principles that we as designers need to know too. Not just for building our own websites, but for designing the best possible websites for our clients as well. So I wanna invite you behind the scenes to watch day one of that site fixer upper challenge that I did so you can learn the essential foundations most people, including even experienced designers, miss when building websites for themselves and their clients. Oh, and don't forget to grab a copy of the workbook that goes along with day one of the challenge. You can find that here, or I'll also pop a link to it in the description below. I just want to say how pleased I am that you decided to join me inside of this Site Fixer Upper Challenge. Over the years, I have helped hundreds of thousands of business owners just like you, entrepreneurs with a burning passion to make their business successful. And you know what? There's one thing that most of them have in common. While they have a great business idea, they are clueless with building a website, and learning how to code is pretty far down the list of things they feel like doing with their time. So while they want their business to do well, the whole website building thing, a vital aspect of any business these days, that can be a real challenge for them. Regardless, I help those entrepreneurs build clean, strategic websites that open both their potential clients' hearts and wallets. Yes, even the entrepreneurs who say, I'm allergic to technology. I help turn them into confident website builders so they never have to rely on an expensive developer for their website needs again. So, while I know that at the beginning of your business, it can feel like web design and online marketing is some scary, overwhelming topic, I want you to know that with a little bit of knowledge on the topic, you too can turn your website from one that no one ever goes to, <laughs> to a place bustling with traffic from your ideal clients. Your website can attract exactly the clients you want to work with, charm them into dying to work with you, and get them to book in your next available slot, all without ever leaving your website. So, once you nail the whole strategic website thing, your website truly can sell for you. That means no more painfully long back and forth emails trying to explain, or yourself or your process, or awkward conversations on the phone about pricing, and it also means never having to write a custom proposal ever again, which between you and me, who wants to spend time doing those things? I know I don't. So, if you're down for your website to do the sales work for you, then you are definitely in the right place. Together in this challenge, we're going to put an end to useless websites full of fluff and turn your site into one that gets your potential ideal clients to fall in love with you and your work and gives them the information and ability to book in for your services right away. Now, every day of the three-day challenge, I'm going to have a mini lesson for you and a small task to help you implement what you learned. By the end of day three, you'll be well on your way to building a site that books. And on day four, I actually have a really special surprise for you and an offer that will help you make even more progress on this topic. So be sure to open that email for me on day four for all the details on that surprise. So if you're ready, let's get into day one's work, shall we? So often I hear from business owners, so I bought this website template, but now I don't know what to do. What do I put on my homepage or my services page? How do I decide like what to put where on the website in general? And then what ends up happening at this point is one of two things. Often business owners go and look at their competitors to see what's on their homepage or services page, and once they see that inspiration, it's pretty hard to unsee it. This results in a whole lot of brand designers or architects or wedding dress designers coming out with strangely similar websites and text that pretty much says the same thing, but in different words. Problem being, the last thing you want to do as a business is to blend in. You know how the business experts say you need a unique value proposition for your product or service? I have to admit, those experts are on something when they say that businesses and products or services need to be unique in order to sell. If I'm looking for a wedding photographer and every single one on their website says that they love love and their drink of choice is a nice coffee, cool, but I mean like you and every other photographer out there as well. So as a bride, how am I supposed to choose? So I want you to really think about if your client sees your site and five others just like it, how are they going to pick you out of a line of save these service providers? If you're the same as everyone else, people start shopping on price. I mean, if I can get the same thing, but $500 less, why wouldn't I? 
That's why you don't want to look at the sites of your competitors when you're building your own. Because you'll start getting ideas on design and layout and what to put on your site and what to say from your competitors, and what do you know, pretty soon you all end up looking very, very similar. Granted, I get that when designing a site, it's hard to not look at other sites in general. Um, it's hard to just think of creative website ideas of thin air. So here's what I want you to do. Go crazy looking at all the inspiration websites in the world, just not the ones in your same industry and definitely not any from your direct competitors. Start with websites you personally frequent and like or just businesses in other industries. Is there a blogger that you follow or a business that you love to buy from or the website of a magazine or brand whose content you love to consume? Write a list down of all those sites and then go take a poke around them. Then note down what is it about their site or voice or vibe or layout or design that you really like. Think back as well to the last time that you hired a service provider. What made them stand out to you? Why did you choose that person? Did you have a similar mission or values? Did they offer something at rush speed? Did their package just include absolutely everything you needed and nothing that you didn't? Or did you just feel like vibe-wise you really liked the person? Picking up on these things can help you reflect the same questions back to yourself and pick up the factors that you'll highlight on your website, which will then make you stand out and be different from your competitors, which is what we're going for. So, now you know what not to do and don't go looking at your competitors' websites first thing, let's move on to the second thing that tends to happen once people get that website template and then get stuck. They tend to then follow the template to a T and just swap out the demo content and the template for their own content, making their new content fit exactly into the old template, where they see a picture, they put in their own picture, where they see text on a banner, they swap in their own banner and their own text. They write in a few new words, and when there was a paragraph before, they swap in their own stuff, but they try to make their words like fit into the same paragraph space and be like the same size. So it you know, fits into the original template and design. Then they figure, I mean, like, okay, that should work great. I followed the template exactly, which I totally get. It's a logical thing to think. I mean, you kind of would assume that website templates are built with site design best practices in mind, right? Unfortunately, those templates are built in pretty generic ways, so they can apply to a variety of businesses. And honestly, while there's definitely common threads of site layout and design best practices, the setup of a website for maybe a wedding venue can and should be very different to that of a wedding photographer, actually, even though it's the same industry. Just as the content and layout and end website goal of the website for a brand designer will be very different from that of a coach or consultant. So now that you know not just to swap your content into your template and then call it a day, let's talk about what you should do instead. You should think from the mind of someone totally new to your business, your ideal client. They land on your homepage from Google or a recommendation of a friend or maybe social media. They're brand new to your service, they've maybe never hired someone for the service that you offer before. They currently don't know, like, or trust you because they don't know you at all right now. So we've got to get them from the place that they're at right now to one where they feel they get what you do and they feel a connection to you in some way and they see you've done legit amazing work in the past and they trust you and they understand the options and packages that you have to work together and then we need to get them to actually take the right first step towards working towards you. So first, let's go through exactly how you can achieve this on your website. I want you to ask yourself and then write down what do people who are brand new to your website need to know or see in order to be ready to book. Let's say, for example, you're a brand designer. The first thing you're probably going to want to see is examples of your past work. Do your past designs fit with your style? Are the past clients you've worked with similar to them? Do you even have past designs at all? And then after that, they probably want to know, like, okay, what are her prices? What are her packages? And what kind of design work does she do? Can she do the type of work I want? Some brand designers only do like print work or logos or book design covers. So it's important that they find out if you even offer the type of service that they want. Then they need to be able to easily see like, ah, that package or service is like right for me. So you want to make sure to clearly define your offerings. And if you have multiple offerings, indicate which is best for what type of business or what's different between your offerings or how to pick the right one for them. And then after that, they need to know like, okay, what happens next? What's the one right next step in order to book? So you want to make it crystal clear what is the one action they need to take in order to get started. For a wedding venue, this would be very different from our brand designer. For a wedding venue, the most important thing is obviously your physical location, where you are, and then getting a sneak peek of the venue itself, normally for a gallery or like videos. 
And then some other general venue information would also be necessary to make a decision. So like how many people is the max limit for the venue? Do you have hotel rooms on the premise? Do you have a catering and staff and bar services? Or do you just get the venue and you need to organize all the other vendors yourself? And then next your bride's gonna wonder like, okay, this place is amazing, is it in my budget? And then after that, she's gonna wanna take a tour in person probably with like a bajillion family members and bridesmaids in tow before she's ready to book. So how does this translate into your website? As you can tell, these two types of businesses, or brand planner and wedding venue, need to show different information on their website in order for their ideal client to be ready to say yes. Which again brings me back to my point about the just swapping out the content and sticking in yours isn't a solid strategy. Think of your website like a roadmap. You have a whole bunch of pages, and your ideal client needs to go through them preferably in a certain order in order to be ready to buy. So let's map out what pages and therefore what content should be on your website. So, for our brand designer, for example, they would want to start off on their homepage, making it like quick and clear what they offer. They would offer brand design services, followed by a mini preview um, of their work and maybe a call to action to their portfolio so they can see the work. And if you're wondering what the heck is a call to action, by the way, basically just means like a button telling your site visitor where to go, what to do next. So in this case, it'd be a button saying like view portfolio. So after that, we know the next most important thing for our ideal client to see is our offering. So then you would want at the bottom of the portfolio page to have a call to action over to your services page. And then after that, the next most important page is the booking or contact page. So getting the ideal client from that page and then having them complete your desired action, whether that be completing a form or a booking call, means you've gotten your ideal client to complete your website's true goal. For the wedding menu, the layout and content and pages a visitor would need to see are different. It would start off again with the home page with a quick, quick and clear info stating like what the offer is, it's an amazing wedding venue in whatever location, followed by a call to action to check out the venue, probably driving over to your like gallery or virtual tour page or whatever you want to call it. And then at the end of that page, you want to give a call to action driving to your info and pricing page. On that page, like the brand designer, you want to state your packages and your pricing, but you've also got to answer some important questions. For example, you need to define like exactly what you offer um, because it tends to be different between different venues. So you would need to talk about like the total number of guests your venue can accommodate, hotel room offerings either on-site or close by, catering options, bar service options, pretty much the necessities that are going to be important to your potential bride to know. Of course, you can discuss all these things more in person, but state the make or breaks on your website. If your location can only fit 50 people and she's having a wedding of 150, there's really no point in her getting in touch, wasting both of your time. So state that stuff up front on your website. And then after that, you want to wow your bride with the location in person. For a lot of service providers, like a brand designer, a consultation call makes total sense, and that's enough to close the deal. But in the case of a wedding venue, even if you absolutely charm the bride on the phone, she's not going to be ready to book until she sees the place in person. So you don't really need to waste your time with an unnecessary step in that consultation call. Just make it easy for her by making the next step on your site a page where she can book a venue tour in person and then drive to that page with calls to action from your like info and pricing page. So, as you can tell from what I've defined here, the information necessary as well as the amount and the final goal of every website are very different between like a brand designer or a wedding venue. Both are service providers, but the information is very different, which again brings me back to my original point. You don't just want to swap your current content into a generic template and call it a day because what you need on your site may be very different from other service providers. Not to mention, most templates I see look super beautiful with just like great fake photos everywhere and little bits of text here and there, which most websites honestly need to have a bit more text to explain your offerings and important information. And trying to fit all your stuff into these like teeny tiny paragraphs and lines of text on a template won't work very well. So what you want to do is strategically think through, okay, what does my ideal client need to know or see in order to say yes, I'm ready to book? And then stick that on your site and then lead them through your site with calls to action and then at the end of each page, or calls to action at the end of each page, so they know where they should go next um, and what they should do and what, how to complete your final website goal. So my homework for you today is to create both a list of the vital info that your client needs to find in order to be ready to book and an example little roadmap through your website. So in the workbook, I'm going to give you some examples of the service providers that we talked about, the brand designer and the wedding venue. And when I say roadmap, I mean like basically just listing the pages that your ideal client should go through in your like perfect world certain order that you determine. On day two of the challenge, we'll chat a little bit about buyer psychology. I have a very fun, important story about jam for you. 
and then we'll also talk about exactly what some service providers do to make choosing them super, super easy, which you can then do the same. All right, so I'm gonna stop us there for today. I give you some examples of that website roadmap in today's workbook, so don't forget to grab yourself a copy and go through the tasks so that you actually can apply what you learned today on your own website, as well as to get you start to think about how you can use these same steps when planning out projects for clients too. Now, next week, I'll be inviting you back behind the scenes to watch day two of the Sitefix Server Challenge, where I'll be sharing a few simple things that you can do to make choosing you from a sea of service providers super easy for your ideal client. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified of when new content drops on the channel, then definitely take a moment and do that now. And if you're enjoying the challenge so far, be sure to let me know by hitting the like button on this video. I super appreciate it. And I'll see you back here next week for the next part of the series. In the meantime, why not check out these videos too? Thank you.